Can you imagine if all of the life that used to go on in this place? People walking everywhere, 24 hour, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, building airplanes, three shifts going all the time, nonstop. Yeah. World War II. Look. Yeah, and you said here's their this power is plant. Volt, not Lockheed. No, it's called Voight now. Yeah, baby. Yes. But I thought it was Lockheed. There's another one called Lockheed. I don't know where we're going. Look, they have their own power plants. They got their own sewer system. They got everything here. It's a self-contained situation. Look at, you know, all these factories used to have different stuff in them. Like this one right here. I don't know what it is, but he, he took me in a bunch of them. See? And each one did one individual thing. Bobby worked out here. I think he retired from here, if I remember right. Building airplanes. It's crazy, man. Okay, looky here. Here we go. All right, look at that old airplane they're restoring over there. You see it? I see it. Wow, there's a lot of people here too. Now, these are all these are all retirees. Now, I understand that, Pete. I just didn't realize there was going to be. Look at I this. Thought it was be one or two. Look guns. at that jet they're restoring. What the hell That's is that? Cool. I just jumped in here. You said in 1917, what happened? Well, isn't it? We built, bought up in Connecticut, built a two place seaplane with a pontoon on it, and it flew off the carriers or the battleships on a catapult. In 1917? Yeah. Wow. And that's what we're building now. And you're building cool, one of those right man. now. Yeah. Now hold on a minute, because there's an airplane over here. We'll stay in yeah. the shade. Let's just walk over there, because you, you were going to mention what is that thing? This is a Regulus. This is a Hang on, Bobby. Same, same okay, thing. Okay, start over. What is it? The Regulus, they call it. A Regulus. Regulus. And it's got a jet engine in it. Uh huh. But it doesn't have a man. You don't have anybody piloting. There's no pilot in it. No. So it's just a flying bomb, or what? That's right. It's a yeah. It's a a flying bomb. bomb. Uh -huh. So the, when that thing landed, it would explode. It didn't land. Once it went up, it came down, and that was it. So it didn't explode or nothing, or it, it probably did. So this is a survivor from that. Uh, well, it never did go into any kind of combat. Huh. This is what they had on the carriers. And, uh, and on the... Uh, uh, so that's a rare stuff. bird is what you'd call that, huh? Well, it's very rare because they're, they don't have very many anymore. Wow. It can't land, and the only way it can take off is... Catapult. It's got these... That's what we... You see that slot there on the side of the vehicle? Right here? Yeah. This? Yeah. That slot right there, Bobby? Yeah. Uh -huh. Or that one. Yeah. Well, that's the electrical part of it. There. Okay, so this slide here, or what? Or what? Okay. See, this is this is a booster. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a that's a turbine booster. That's a JTO they call. Wow. It.
and after it gets up, this air gets up in the air flying, uh -huh. well, it falls off. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's huh. got to have that in order to get it up in the atmosphere. Wow. So what is this thing made for? Well, it's made to, to bomb. Just like it's just a bomb to explode. It's just like a scout missile, but it's the early version. Huh. Uh, I told you it looked like a bomb. There, come on over here, Bobby. We got our generator going. Yeah. The deal is with this aircraft, you have to get it started on the fly line uh -huh. and get it in the upright position ready to take off. Oh, okay. And once it gets up there, uh, near the airplane already flying has to fly it like a... Oh, remote control. Yeah. You were right. It was remote control. Yeah. Oh, like a drone. So that's uh, kind of like that's kind of like the first uh, remote control airplane ever designed. Well, it could be. I don't know the history on it very huh. well. I didn't get to work on that program. All I know is uh, it was uh, to do. They they made a, enough to satisfy the military. Wow. How many of them? Now, did they build those airplane? What did you call them again? What's the name of them? It's a Regulus. So Regulus. Regulus 1. Regulus 1. Now the Regulus 2 had landing gears on it. See that landing gear is not attached. Uh-huh. Right. And uh, <clears throat> the 2, and it would be on the flight line, started up. And this is on like a, a aircraft carrier? Well, no. It, it oh, it could be on land too? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we had a pilot here working with us. His name is Joe Engel. And he flew in a T-33 with the box for remote and flew it. Wow. From cool. the, and the thing out flew the T-33. They had to find some way to slow it down so it would stay up with it. Now, did they ever use those for like uh, surveillance, possibly put cameras on them? And I have no idea. We don't know. Top secret stuff going on, right, Bobby? Uh, <laughs> okay. Let me get some B-roll real quick. Okay, go in there and I'll be right in there. see the situation now you're really getting the true story now on our last visit here we were in a much bigger hangar um, there was a bunch of action going on we talked to a lot of guys that were in here hopefully we're gonna get some good interviews with a bunch of war vets here that were possibly not in the war but were connected with war because these are the guys that are behind the scenes these are the guys that really made the difference and actually put everything together to make the airplane happen and do the job it was supposed to do. Let's go get with Bobby and see what's going on. We build this from the blueprints from the original. Now, uh, is this a, this, so this uh, original plane you're building from scratch, the That's brand right. new one. Yeah, yeah. But you're using the original blueprints That's, to build it with. That's right. Okay. And and they they have to go in there and and get into the archives at the building that they came out of up in Cincinnati. This is the first pontoon aircraft that flew off the deck of the Enterprise or the Constellation, it's the hangar. Now what year was that, Bobby? 1970. Thank you. 
19. So this is an exact replica yeah. of that airplane that they got the authentic blueprints from up yeah. in Cincinnati where they got all the archives. Yes. Wow. And when we get through with this, it'll probably hang in some museum, like the one over in Smithsonian or something. Yeah. yeah. They, they, uh, uh, Will this be the only one in existence? Probably. I don't know if they ever have any more. Probably. They had, they had one in some lake up there that they picked up. And if they've been in the lake 60 years and tried to give it to us, but it was too far gone. Now let me ask you a question. What's the name of this airplane again? Well, they call it uh, O3U3. O3U3. Yeah. It doesn't have a name. There's particular. not really any name. It was just a 1917 aircraft yeah. warship. Come here. What is it? Corsair. Okay. All right. Corsair. Who is this guy, Bobby? This is Bob. He's my yeah. best, best okay. heifer. Okay. Yeah. How you doing, Bill? Shake your hand. Make a friend there. It's all right. Close him. Okay. <laughs> What do we got here, Bill? Tell us a little story about the OU-377 or whatever we got. <laughs> it's, uh, it's built from scratch. Uh, kind of represents. There was a lot of different years that this was built, and it was uh, used as a reconnaissance plane. It was a reconnaissance. So was that like a remote control plane, or did somebody actually fly it? There was two two in there. There was a gunner and a Now, this is a, a pontoon boat, which means it can land on water. Uh, that's what they shoot it off of, of a, a ship, and, and like a big rubber band. Well, like a catapult. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they would uh, go out, you know, past the horizon where they couldn't see, and right. do reconnaissance, and then they they come back and then land it in the ocean, and then they pick it up, put it back on the ship. Now, what's your job on this plane? What are you making right now? Um, well, this is what this, is this thing right here? This is a muffler I'm building for a the, muffler for this radial engine over here. For another, this is for another airplane y'all are working on. No, this is this one. Oh, that's the same one. We need to come over here and look at the. Okay. All right, we'll get around there. Let me get some pictures of this airplane, and we'll be over there in a minute. All right, Bill. All right. Thank you, sir. What's going on over here, buddy? What are we doing today? Well, what we're doing today is we're. We're putting our stringers on here. Uh, what's a stringer? What do you mean a the stringer? The sides of the airplane. And okay. this represents the wood stringers. Okay, so this, and, uh, and, and originally these were made out of wood. Right, and what we have to do is get the contour, get the get the shape of it, uh -huh. and then we re then we go ahead and remove the, these pieces right here and put our wood stringers on. Here. Oh, so these are just like a model to make the wood. Right. It's like a, it's a, it's a, what we're doing is building a model, and then we're going to take it off here and put it on here. Okay, now is this going to be made out of wood too? No, we have wood strips. Okay. Wood strips that come all the way around, so we, we recess that wood strip into this metal. Oh, wow. And then we go ahead, that way we can glue these wooden strips. So there's a time-consuming project here. This isn't like building a little model, plastic model airplane that you buy over at Target or TGM Wire. Yeah, and the glue don't stick to your fingers either. There you go, buddy. <laughs> now, you guys are pop riveting every single little... Uh, are these special pop rivets or...? No, no, these are regular aluminum pop rivets. Uh -huh. And this is what this is holding in place. Okay. So therefore when we have to move one of the stringers out that makes a little contour, a little dip, we can remove the pop rivet right here okay. and just push that back here until we'll bring it bring out. All of these. I see what you're saying. Wow. You see, That's a hell of a job, buddy. Uh, like right here on this side right here, uh -huh. one of the stringers over here that they missed. Okay. I'm talking about the tool designers missed it. So what we're doing is just putting this uh, piece out here. Put it right there, this, and then put another bracket up there without having to move Because if I don't, the stringer will be too far inside now, Our the buddy Bobby said that you're building this off the original authentic blueprints of the original airplane. Yes, we are. That were archived from Cincinnati. Right, and they come in there and they didn't, They at that time they didn't use TDCs or reworks. They just had a, a lead band, had a logbook, and he changed everything, and huh. whatever they built, they made that, at that first article, they made all the tooling off uh -huh. of it. So we come over here, and every time there's a change, we went from revision A, revision B, C, D. Now we're in question. We, have no we don't idea. know where we're at. No, I'm talking about as far as, that's a joke. That there you go, but now what's, 
Let me ask you a question. What's all this going on here? This, is this like the blueprint drawing? I drew this all up so they can have an idea that this is exactly what we've been putting on right here, these little stringers right here. Oh, okay, okay. And you see, and this is how we're clipping them on there off this bulk. Right, right. Now, what was your uh, job when you were actually employed here, bud? I was a uh, uh, journeyman tool maker. I was in tool design. You were a tool maker? Yes, so I you was. literally made tools that would build these airplanes. Right, and also I was in uh, tool design and uh, projects and stuff like that. You're talking about tools, hand tools that would use to make all these work. Yeah, and I also got a degree in tool design. So I Wow. Was, anyway, and this is, this right here. These are the pontoons or what? No, these are the stringers. This represents the stringers coming over there. Oh, that's this thing right, right. here. This right here, what I did is I established a center line so I could keep the stringers in the same degree. You see this right here? This uh, uh, right here. Uh-huh. Okay, the center line. Center line. And then this is also, that's the center line of the butt line. This is the center line of the station. So we can come over here and measure over here. So no, that's it, like a measuring point to get everything accurately perfect. It's a grid system. Wow. I made a grid system on there to keep our bulkheads the same. I see him precisely measuring that to make sure the angle of the, of right. the, uh, the uh, clip. stringers. Yeah, the, the clip. Pitch. The clip will be the okay, degree. Clip. degree oh, so here. he's taking an angle uh, finder to make a clip like this. Off of this right here. Okay. And then, of course, this will be removed when we put the wood. Because everything's got to be precise, am I right? Yeah, because... Uh, the, Will vibration uh, kill it or what? No, everything's got to be precise. Uh, back then they, they, they kept it outside, flew it around, and it really didn't mean if they had a little bulge, it really uh -huh. didn't make that much difference. But today, in today's world, everything, when you go look at an airplane, they want to make sure it looks symmetrical. Right. They don't realize that back then the plane was a little rough looking. Well, thanks a lot, buddy. What's okay. your name? Stan Bullard. Stan Bullard. Now, are you a buddy of Bobby's? Y'all used to work together or what? Uh, which Bobby? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which... Bobby Brown. Oh, yeah. The... You guys probably call him Bob. Oh, I, well, there's a few other things, too. Uh, good, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, buddy. We appreciate it, Stan. We're going to go look at some other stuff, bud. Okay. Keep right. up the good work. Okay, thank you. Stan's in charge. Oh, oh, he's the supervisor. Oh, yeah. He's oh, yeah. Hold, hold on. Hold on, man. The, What's the, the, the uh, plane was originally built on two saw, saw horses. Two saw horses? Up, up, right there. Now you're talking about 1917. Yeah, right about somewhere around in there. Right. But <clears throat> there were young guys. We have 80 year old men here. So oh, I built a turn uh, uh, turning tool here. Oh, okay. So you so, got it on a rotisserie. Right. Okay. But there you go. You it, built this. And this is a big turkey. <laughs> there you go. This is your turkey so we, rotisserie. We rotisserie. Put it on there so we can work on it. Yeah. I designed it through the center line right here. And that's pro that's perfect centered flawlessly right in the center. It's shot in. Everything is shot in on this tool frame on huh. here is optics. Because so I use a rotisserie like that when I restore old classic cars. Right. There you go. That's a pretty good idea, so, Stan. That way, uh, but the only and that's why your nickname's Stan the Man. Yeah, and there a few you go. other things. <laughs> All right, buddy, and a few other things. Thanks a lot, Stan. We appreciate it. Okay, okay. Korean War, World War II, and Korean vet. How you yes. doing, bud? All right. All right. What's your name? O'Hara. O'Hara. Now, did you build planes or fly them? I built them. You built them? Yes. And you were also in the war itself. Right. Wow. It's nice meeting you, buddy. Thank what are you, you working on today? This? <laughs> You're working on this one too, huh? Okay. Let us get with Bobby. He wants to show us around. I'm going to come back right. and talk okay. to you, okay? All right. That guy you are talking to, he helped build this pontoon here. Now, this is a pontoon that actually goes on the bottom of this airplane. That's right. Wow. And now, is that pontoon done, Bobby, or no? Well, they all but the painting. Uh-huh. Yeah. And this man is building the winglets. Out. The winglets. They're built already too. Huh? They're already built. Yeah, he, he's he's building them in. Should we get him to show us those or? Yeah, or are they, they up there in storage right now? Are they upstairs? Yeah. They're okay, storage. they're already in storage. All right, we'll be back in a little while, buddy. All right, what's going on with this one, Bobby? We got a lot of noise here. <laughs> Yeah, this is an F7U3. An F7U3, what year would that have been available? Yep, 1953, 52, 51. And it's a, got two engines.
engines made by GE uh -huh. and uh, it's the prettiest aircraft in the sky. Now did uh, you work on one of these when you worked here? And I started in 1953. I worked on the mezzanine up there under Bob Downing and I worked in the cockpit area of this aircraft. Wow. So this is what you started working on right here. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's the cutlass. Yeah. Okay, what is this? That'll, you'll see that. That's on the other side of the plane. That's this plane. Yeah. Okay, so this is called an F-17 cutlass. F-7U-3. An F-7U-3. I'm sorry, Bobby. We got a lot of noise going on. It's over here. All right.